Hey there, Parker Reed here, and welcome to PR Media, your home for everything movies and music through my eyes. And today we have a review of Season 1 of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is an American television miniseries created by Malcolm Spellman for the streaming service Disney+, Plus, based on Marvel Comics characters Sam Wilson, The Falcon, and Bucky Barnes's The Winter Soldier. It is set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or the MCU, sharing continuity with the films of the franchise. The events of the series take place after the film Avengers Endgame. In the series, Falcon and the Winter Soldier are a mismatched duo who team up for a global adventure that will test their survival skills as well as their patience. So going into this new series on Disney+, Plus, I'm a big fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I've seen all the movies, I've seen WandaVision, and I plan to see everything after this as well because I'm a big fan. I'm a Marvel fanboy, call me what you will, but I really enjoyed this series, and here is why. The Winter Soldier and Falcon have always played second fiddle to Chris Evans and Captain America, so in this series we really get to dive deeper into their mindset, dive deeper into their backstory, and deeper into their emotional psyche because both of them are dealing with a lot of trauma right now. Sam Wilson is dealing with the trauma of is he supposed to give up the shield? Is he supposed to become Captain America after Chris Evans gives it to him at the end of Endgame? And Bucky's still dealing with all the PTSD he has from being the Winter Soldier. He's trying to deal with, is that still in me or not? So both of them are dealing with different problems and different emotional headspaces that lead into the actual story. And the exploration of these mindsets was the most interesting part of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, especially the Winter Soldier. You get a few scenes with him that are emotionally tear-jerking because before he was pretty much just the muscle of the situation. He was just a mindless killer up until the last couple of movies, so to finally see him get a little bit of an emotional arc was great to see. And while the Falcon's plotline is good, I don't think it's as strong as the Winter Soldier's. By the end of the series, it is much stronger than it was initially, but by the end of it, I was emotionally satisfied with the Falcon's plotline as well. And a lot of talk in this series was the talk of the new Captain America, at least the new Captain America for a while, which was John Walker, who eventually became U.S. agent. I know, spoiler alert, don't watch a review for something if you haven't watched yet, but John Walker, played by Wyatt Russell, this was a phenomenal role. He really hated him for a while there. He kind of redeemed himself towards the end, but I enjoyed his plotline immensely. It felt like a very realistic thing that the government would do. They want a figurehead to represent the strong mindset and the strong front of the United States government. By the end of it, I think he had another great arc. Everyone in this show, for the most part, has really good arcs, and I was glad to see that a lot of these side characters in the Captain America story finally came to fruition, but when you have six episodes and roughly five and a half hours of television, it's going to happen. And the show also did really well with a really great cinematography, really great action scenes, and I can go on and on about that, but those are the obvious obvious things, but there are some things in this show that I just didn't love. The first thing is this show is super preachy. Oh my god, by the end of it, there was a scene with the Falcon. I was just like, okay, I get it. You're hammering it over the head. I get it. I get it. I get it. I understand. It even came to in episode five, they actually said the show's through line. I won't spoil the show completely, but that does happen. And yes, this show is pretty relevant to times now, but it just, like, we're getting that everywhere else. I don't need that in my Marvel television. Another negative I have with the show is it does feel a little bit inconsequential and rushed. I wish this would have been in seven or eight episodes like a WandaVision. I just didn't get the emotional payoff, the plot payoff I wanted by the end of it. It feels kind of like, okay, we got to wrap this up. We got to get to the movies now. And I just didn't love that aspect of it. I wanted it to breathe a little bit more so we can develop these characters in this plot line a little bit more. But by the end of this show, I did really enjoy it. It looked great, sounded great, and there were some great arcs. But overall, it just, it wasn't as good as WandaVision for me. I liked WandaVision's emotional heart a little bit more. This show focused a little bit more on action, a little bit more on plot. And I just liked WandaVision a little bit more. What can I say? But I would still give the first season of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier a solid 8 out of 10. I'm glad we're getting these series on Disney+. Plus. I'm very much looking forward to Loki, and I can't wait to revisit this series eventually. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked what you saw here, you can check us out on Facebook or Instagram. And like, comment, and subscribe if you so choose. My name is Parker Reed. You've been watching PR Media. Keep supporting physical media, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Hello, girl, kick your ass. I...